Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. While advanced users may want to simply create a new mail merge document, new users may find that it's easier to create a mail merge document by using the mail merge wizard provided in Word. This leads you through the process of creating mail merge documents step by step. To start a mail merge in Word, first click the Mailings tab in the ribbon. Then click the Start Mail Merge button in the Start Mail Merge button group. From the button's drop-down menu, choose the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard command. This will open the Mail Merge task pane at the right side of the document window. Here you answer the questions posed to you and click the Next hyperlink at the bottom of the pane to continue through the Mail Merge process until you are finished. The first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard will ask you what type of document are you working on. You will select the Option button that corresponds to the type of Mail Merge document that you are trying to create. The choices that follow in the next few steps of the Mail Merge Wizard will vary slightly, depending upon which choice you make in this screen. When you've made your selection, click the Next Starting Document hyperlink shown at the bottom of the task pane to continue. In the next pane of the Mail Merge Wizard, Word will ask how do you want to set up your document. Note that the choices vary slightly depending upon what type of document you selected to create in the previous pane. If you have a blank document open that you want to use as the merge document, then select the Use the Current Document Choice. If you select this option, then simply click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. If you would like to use one of the pre-made mail merge templates that are available in Word, then instead select the Start from a Template option. In this case, you would then need to click the Select Template command in the middle of the task pane to open the Select Template dialog box. If you have a document open that has existing content, a warning pop-up will appear. You can click OK in the pop-up box that appears to delete the current contents of your document. If you want to save the contents of your document, click Cancel, Save Your Document, and open a new blank document and reopen the Mail Merge Wizard. In this dialog box that appears, you can double click on the mail merge template that you want to use. Note that the template can be modified if necessary to better suit your needs. After selecting your template, you would then click the OK button, and then you can click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane when you're ready to continue. You can also open any previously saved Word document to use it as the merge document. If you want to do that, then instead choose the Start from Existing Document option button. In the Start from Existing section that then appears, click the More Files option and then click the Open button to launch the Open Dialog box. Use the Dialog box to browse for the Word document that you want to use. Once you've found it, just double-click the document in the Open Dialog box to have it displayed in the main document window. Then at that point you can click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Note that if you had selected the Envelopes or the Labels option back in the first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard, then in the second screen you will have different options than the ones that were just mentioned. If you had selected Envelopes, then you will see two options in the task pane. If the currently open document is not a standard envelope, then you can select the Change Document Layout option and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the Envelope Options dialog box. You could also simply click the Envelope Options command shown in the task pane to open the Envelope Options dialog box if you prefer. In the Envelope Options dialog box, you will see options for printing your envelopes. Most importantly, here is where you select the envelope size that you will be using for the mail merge. You can set the envelope size by choosing an option from the Envelope Size drop-down. If you don't see the size envelope you need, you can click the Custom Size command in the drop-down menu to open the Envelope Size dialog box. You can then enter the width and height of the envelope in inches into the spinner boxes or use the spinner arrows to change the size of the envelope. You can then click the OK button to save your custom envelope size and return to the Envelope Options dialog box. You can also set the display of the font for both the delivery address and return address for your envelopes on the Envelope Options tab of the Envelope Options dialog box. You can click the Font button in either the Delivery Address or Return Address section to open the Envelope Address dialog box. You can then use the option shown on the Font and Advanced tabs to change the font settings for that selected section in your envelope. 
These tabs should seem familiar as they contain the same options as the font dialog box that you learned about in Chapter 6, Font Formatting. When you've set the font options for the delivery address and or return address for your envelope, you can click the OK button to save your changes and return to the Envelope Options dialog box. You can then click the Printing Options tab and use the buttons and checkboxes there to set other options, such as the Printer Feed and Printer Tray options. When you have finished setting your desired options, you can click the OK button to return to the Mail Merge wizard. If necessary, you can then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the third screen in the Mail Merge wizard. Now, if you had selected the Labels option in the first screen of the Mail Merge wizard, then the second screen would have options similar to the ones that you have for envelopes. If the currently open document isn't a standard label, then you can click the Change Document Layout option and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue and open the Label Options dialog box. You could also just click the Label Options command instead in the task pane to open the Label Options dialog box if you prefer. This dialog box contains the options for printing your labels. First select whether you will be using a continuous feed printer or page printer by choosing the appropriate option in the Printer Information section. If you select the Page Printers option, then you may need to select from which tray in the printer you will print your label by choosing the desired tray from the Tray drop-down. In the Label Information section, select the manufacturer of your label from the Label Vendors drop-down. Then select the label type that you will be using from the Product Number list. You can see the details of a selected label by clicking the Details button. A dialog box will open and display the size, margins, and pitch for your selected labels. The paper size and the number of labels on a sheet are also shown in this dialog box. While you can make changes to these settings, it is not recommended when working with pre-made labels. Click the OK button to return to the Label Options dialog box. If you don't see the label you have, or if you prefer to create your own labels, you can click the New Label button to open the Label Details dialog box. It is important to note that the information you enter into this dialog box must exactly match the information for your label sheets. If the measurements are off in any way, your labels will not print properly and you'll have to start over. You can first enter a name for your label into the Label Name text box. You will then use the spinner boxes and the drop-down within the dialog box to create your new label. After you've entered all of the information, you can click the OK button to save your new label and return to the Label Options dialog box. Once you've selected your label type, click the OK button to return to the task pane. If necessary, you can then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the third screen in the Mail Merge wizard. Once you've selected the document to use as your Mail Merge document, you must next choose the data source for the Mail Merge document in the Select Recipients pane of the Mail Merge wizard. If you already have a list, such as an Excel spreadsheet that you want to use for the Merge document, then choose the Use an Existing List option at the top of the task pane. If you choose this option, then you will need to click the Browse hyperlink in the middle of the task pane in order to launch the Select Data Source dialog box. This dialog box will open up and display the contents of a default folder, so you may need to navigate to the folder in which your actual data source is stored. Once you've found the list that you want to use as your data source, double-click it in order to select it and return to the task pane. Note that you may need to select a specific table from the database or select a specific sheet from a workbook if you're using either an Access database or an Excel workbook as the data source. Once you've selected the data source that you will be using, you will then see the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box appear. You can use this dialog box to filter and sort the recipient information. We will examine how to use this dialog box in a separate lesson. However, once that has been done, you can then click the OK button in the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box to close it and return to the task pane. If you wanted to use information from an Outlook Contacts folder versus using an existing list, then you would instead select the Option button for Select from Outlook Contacts in the Select Recipients screen in the task pane. This will then launch Microsoft Outlook. In Outlook, you will need to select the Contacts folder that you want to use as the data source. Once you've selected the Contacts folder that you will be using, you will once again see the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box appear. Here you can sort and filter the data from the data source. Once again, we will cover the use of this dialog box in a separate lesson as it is fairly extensive. 
Once you've finished using the dialog box to sort and filter the data, just click the OK button to return to the task pane. You could also create a new list of mail merge information to use by choosing the Type a new list option in the task pane and then clicking the Create button. Word then prompts you to create a new list for the mail merge in the New Address List dialog box. We will cover how to create and edit a data source on the fly in a separate lesson. However, once you have created the list, you can then click the OK button to open the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box. As mentioned, we do use the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box to filter and sort the data used by the Mail Merge document. This will also be covered in a separate lesson. Once you have finished sorting and filtering the data using this dialog box, you can then click the OK button to return to the task pane. After you've set the data source for your merge document, click the next hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to proceed to the next step. In the next step of the mail merge wizard, you would enter any static or unchanging information for the document directly into the mail merge document. You can also use the available hyperlinks in the task pane to insert various fields of information from your data source into the document at the desired positions. To insert information from your data source, you can click the More Items hyperlink in the task pane. This will launch the Insert Merge Field dialog box. Select the option for Database Fields at the top of the dialog box to see the listing of available fields from your data source. You can then click the name of the field that you want to insert into the selected position within the document, and then click the Insert button at the bottom of the dialog box to insert the selected field. Note that if you simply need to insert some address information, you could instead click the Address Block hyperlink in the task pane to open the Insert Address Block dialog box. Here you can select what elements of the address to insert, and then click the OK button to insert the selected address elements. You could also click the Greeting Line hyperlink in the task pane to open the Insert Greeting Line dialog box. Here you can choose from several letter openings for a mail merge document. You can then click the OK button to return to the task pane. Also note that if you are creating labels, you only need to create the fields in the first label. You can then click the Update All Labels button to copy the fields that you inserted into the first label to all of the other label areas in the mail merge document. When you're done creating your merge document, Click the next hyperlink at the bottom of the Mail Merge task pane to continue. The next screen in the task pane allows you to preview the merge results. To do this, you can just click the double pointing chevrons at the top of the task pane to view the merge results prior to actually merging the data. After you've previewed the information to ensure that the merge has been performed correctly, you can then click the next button at the bottom of the task pane to continue. When you want to print the mail merge document, you can then click the print hyperlink at the top of the task pane to open the merge to printer dialog box. Here you can select the range of records in the data source that you want to print, and then just click the OK button when you're ready to print the selected records. If you wish to make individual changes to different letters or labels or so forth within the merge group, you can instead click the edit individual letters hyperlink shown in the middle of the task pane. This will launch the Merge to New Document dialog box where you can select the range of records to merge into a new document. This is an output document that is often created during the merge process. In the New Document window that appears when you click OK, you can then make changes to the individual letters if you wish. You can then print this new output document along with any individual editing changes that you have made in order to complete the merge. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.